Hey, hey, my people. Hey, greetings from the Great Start Studio, where all my dreams are coming true, where we ask the question, how good do you want to be? This is the theme to my uh, instructional series, How Good Do You Want to Be? Once you answer that question, it'll answer just anything that you have in life about drumming. I have to ask myself two questions. How good do I want to be? and how long do I want it to take? Let's, I can't tell people how much to practice. So I've got these drumstick illustrations and if I try to make them short, if I can, the difference between your mind and your body and it couldn't be clear. I mean, I mean this goes back, this is, this is like back to the Greeks. This is like the Bible where you got, you've got basically, you got your mind, your body and your soul. So let's just take the soul part, <laughs> the moral component. We're just gonna take the moral component out for a second. This here is really about your mind and your body being separate. And when you really get this into your thinking, I mean, you can't play drums very long and you'll, you'll be playing along and your foot will do something it's not supposed to do. Like you go, what? Why did that happen? How did that even happen? I mean, that's my foot. It's I've been attached to that. My foot's been attached to me here my whole life. How is it possible that all of a sudden it did something I did not intend it to do? So you have to just, oh man, there's too much. Everything is like a giant M&M. And once I see it as that, it looks like it's all solid candy, but when you get into it, it's all really chocolate. There's so much more volume why space of it is chocolate and the top layer is just your mind that's the part that creates the illusion that everything can be controlled with your mind but your body has habits that you develop as you go and the very shortest way i can i can make this your body only knows what it does and so even if your mind is saying, you know, I want to do X, but your body keeps doing Y, it's because you've already trained it to do Y a bunch of times. You've done it by making mistakes or you've done it by creating habits that are just, they're not red and blue. It's a shade of light blue and it's right next to what you're trying to do, but it isn't the same thing that you're doing. So instead of going E and, now it's and a, uh, right? And so your your foot keeps wanting to go back to E and because you've trained yourself to do E and. This problem is huge when you're teaching and once you start understanding how this works, that your mind and your body are really completely separate. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't, okay, I'm trying to, I'm trying to boil this down. Uh, look, if anything I'm saying, is uh, appealing to you if it, it uh, is, is giving you content uh, subscribe like something comment on something it really helps me get my work out there these are all just little snapshots of uh, things that when I'm teaching that have helped me uh, make an overview an overview like a giant umbrella it's almost like a girding underneath a foundation so that when I go to play the notes then I can put them into these categories that make sense your mind has no restriction your body is full of restriction. The frustration happens when you think, I should be able to do this. I'm looking right at the page, I should be able to do this. But your body keeps telling you something else. Your body keeps telling you that you haven't built a habit yet. But your mind is like, but I got this. This is what justifies mistakes. So basically when you're playing along and our egos are just horrible, we actually get to where we understand the notes. And then your mind just goes, oh, I got this. But that's just the beginning. It's like you get a race car and we can't just race. We have to get all the parts assembled in the garage. We start building them. We start understanding that what, what a carburetor is, what the spark plugs do with the gas and all that does. You build it. And then once you build it, then you can race it around like music. But you have to build it. And this process of building in your mind is like, I could just race this. And you go, no, you have to take the time. And then once you build it, and then you actually have to race it through this track, the physical track of actually processing that motion so that you know which side you're doing what hand you're doing what oh and this kit with the with the mirror thing that i'm doing oh i just <laughs> whoo, uh, in the studio i just recorded a, a track it's an 11 8 track uh, it'll be out there as soon as he he does he gets the complete on it and uh, three other tracks are there these original songs kind of reggae which i also did on this so like on the 11 when we'll have a transcription available I'm, I'm trying to build a lot. We got the whole other section. <laughs> There's so many things. I got the whole other section of the studio over here where uh, uh, I'll be running down the whole series and all that stuff. So all that's going to be coming out here really soon. I'm pretty excited. This is, this is a pretty exciting time. I've got to hold my hat off. Uh, okay, so this thing here, right? Once you understand this difference between your mind and your body, you will start when you learn with your mind. You look at the page and I always say that is the what. What are you supposed to learn? And then as soon as you build the what, which is like building the car in the garage, you've built the what, that's not where you end. That's the beginning of working it out with your body and just repeating it, running the track. Now that you understand the what and start thinking about the how, how you're approaching the drums physically, how you can make them more efficient, how you, how your arm can be ready because this one's still playing and this one isn't and you're right, all these efficiencies. Once you, 
can't get it all in. Once you, once you get that system down of understanding that your mind is where you start and then the feeling your body and then you literally you don't even have to think of it after a while right but you have to do it long enough people do not do it long enough i could just well all of drumming problems down is that you just take something and you do it longer way way longer than you think that you need to do it if you could just get your mind around letting go it gets bored it gets bored because there's nothing for your mind to do and you just have to literally sit i was just talking to somebody and they were talking about when they do all their their best thinking right just maybe when they're driving or something and there's nothing else to do when i'm just sitting and repeating things that's when my mind drifts off and that's when i get to think about what i'm going to do what my what i'm going to eat for lunch what my plans are and all this you get to think about all sorts of things you can think about the news you can think about a topic but you just have to re keep repeating repeating right your mind gets bored and goes well i should be doing something else but you just got to set your mind <laughs> you got to set your mind aside your mind is there to figure out what and then your body goes and then you start transferring over to feeling this is how i boil it all down to is is that you think to practice and then you feel to play and what you do is you have to pr process everything over uh, it's like a kiln you put the pottery in and it hardens it up for use by repeating, and you just have to repeat it way more than, <laughs> there's, there's just too much stuff. Once again, uh, hit subscribe. Um, I got a whole gob of these things, these drumstick illustrations. I just can't help it because I got a stick in my hand. And I always, it seems like it always comes down to a certain kind of stick, stick spectrum. This thing is one giant spectrum. If you can just start with your mind and don't stop there, but then repeat long enough and get to feeling, it will become one giant thing. So you can skip around with your mind and just think, or you can skip around and just feel it. And then you own all all sides of it. Uh, check out my series available on, on Amazon so you can check that. It walks through all the meters. Uh, there's a book in every meter. This is like a dream. This would have been a dream for me. I would have went, man, how do I play 7-8? There's a book in 7-8. How do I how do I play in 9-8? There's a book in 9-8. 5-8? Okay. It walks down the same exact way that I approach 4-4 four, four in this musical sort of depth. Everybody goes, well, you do you know a beat in 5. Yeah, I know take 5. And you go, no, that's just a beat in take 5. That's not five, four, five, eight, it's just a five. Five is a giant world. It's a bigger world than four, four, because you get the extra 20%. It is a huge amount of very, I, oh, I gotta stop. Thanks for uh, watching these. I would just binge watch them because every one of them has got all this information in it. So, Larry London, signing out from the Great Star Drum Studio. Back at it. <laughs>